Hello team, welcome to another ATP Geopolitics video with myself, Jonathan, MSP. This is Ukraine War Frontline Update for the 23rd of April 2024. If you don't know what the lines on my map mean, please pause the video and check out the key on the screen at the moment. Let's go to the map that JR has so amazingly updated. Thanks, mate. We have, oh, just a heads up that I am doing a live uh, live chat with Jake Bro tomorrow night UK time. So please pop into that one and make yourselves known. Uh, and also check out the interview I did with Sean Penner, the soldier fighting for the Ukrainians since 2018, who was captured in Mariupol and tortured and then exchanged as a prisoner. Absolutely fascinating story. Uh, please check out the live to that that was done in the last week. Right, okay, we'll go to the northeastern sector or uh, access from Kupians to Svatova. No change there. A little bit of a change according to Andrew Perpetua in the Turney Tulska salience just west of Kramina, where the Ukrainians have uh, lost a little bit more territory, or the Russians have consolidated gains over a tiny bit of uh, territory just between two tree lines, a bit of scrub land and tree land in a sort of low river valley if you like um but yeah not too much land and in fact the other map has already had that so that's more of a of a confirmation rather than anything that particularly happened yesterday so i would say that there would be no change to that sector in fact there's no change to this first front line in the institute for the study war american military think tank nothing to you know this very short paragraph for the that entire northeastern axis the Seversk front line Nothing really to report. And so we get down to Bakhmut and Chaziv Yar, where, as you can see, interesting, some blue uh, and light yellow pins here, which means that there are some uh, adjustments to be made in favour of the Ukrainians. Right. Uh, DSM says Ukrainian defence force uh, forces regained positions south of Ivaniska. So this isn't a case of readjusting to overzealous mapping the these are all three mappers agreeing there are some changes to the south and that appears to be the ukraine's regaining some ground that's interesting because it might make the russians think twice about further pushes to the west it even if if they are being sort of flanked to the south there andrew perpetua has the russian defensive line pushed right back to kind of the uh, edge i guess of Bakhmut itself, where the mapping for uh, Surat maps is somewhat different, has them still in control of that area, and the, the Russians being pushed back further to the south, but the other mappers didn't really have that. But well, Deep State Map had a little bit of control for the Russians in that area, but Andrew Perpetua not at all. So this was either some overzealous mapping for uh, Surat maps here. Uh, yeah, it could be a mixture of both and then and then a push further to the north there or, or both. I'm not really sure. But nonetheless, it's really good news for the Ukrainians that they are pushing back. They aren't just on the defensive there. There's an active defense to what they are doing. In that area, it must be noted that the Russians are using um, incendiary munitions here. Incendiary munitions raining down on Chelsea VR. Russians are attempting to occupy the city. They've been ordered to occupy it before the 9th of May according to Russian leadership, which is uh, something we hear quite a lot. Um, but yeah, it must be horrific having that rain down. If you can't find any uh, any safe shelter, uh, horrible stuff. So uh, the Russians are using that freely in the area. The ISW says of the sector, Russian forces continued offensive operations towards Chesivia, but did not make any confirmed gains. Although there was a Rus uh, Ukrainian forces spokesman saying that uh, yesterday, between 20 and 25,000 Russian personnel are trying to assault the outskirts of Chazivyar. Noted the elements of the Russian uh, 217th Guards Airborne, the VDV Elite Regiment, are particularly active in that effort. So, this is a very active part of the front line, the Chazivyar area, but that there are some small Ukrainian gains there that everyone seems to agree on is really good news for the Ukrainians. Uh, the bad news for the Ukrainians is what's taking place to the northern um, northern area of the Avdivka salient. This small town called Orech Orech Turner or uh, no Ocheretnye, <laughs> uh, which is uh, probably pronounced in a completely different way to that, but it is a place that has seen some large Russian gains quite quickly and that appears to be as a result of some pretty disastrous Ukrainian uh, 
um, tactics or lack thereof with some units going AWOL and the Russians really uh, taking advantage of that situation and moving in to uh, trench lines and tree lines where the Ukrainians just weren't and it's caused a bit of consternation. Anyway, Syriac Maps interprets it, interprets it, interprets it this way. Russian army took control over the centre of Ocheretny and the Ukrainian army continue retreating towards Altcom Brick Factory and a northern neighbourhood. So they're pulling out of the, or certainly much further into the northern part of the settlement. Uh, here, the situation in Ocheretny on the Avdivka axis, what I know from my friends from that direction, it is effing hell. Unfortunately, one of the newly arrived brigades, as I reported yesterday, the 115th Mechanized Brigade, left its positions without permission, which led to a breakthrough by the Russians. Due to the incompetence of the brigade command and the cowardice of the soldiers, the soldiers of the 47th Mechanized Brigade, these are people who were due to be rotated out, who have done an awful lot of fighting. They're quite famous, the 47th. Uh, they had to urgently engage in combat with the superior enemy forces, as in great in numbers the f uh, the effing 10th army corps screwed up even here so these guys I don't, I don't know too much about them but they're obviously a division that are not particularly well thought of a video of a bradley from the ukraine's 47th brigade firing on russian positions in ocheretny uh, the 47th brigade bradleys have been quite active in this whole area if you remember they were back in step over um, back here, sort of driving down here, sort of raking the Russian uh, soldiers and and um, units in the sort of tree and destroyed rubble, rubbleized buildings along there. Uh, they've been quite active in this whole area. Badici, there were some there, and then now being used way back here in Osheretny. So yeah, uh, that is what's taking place there. So. This was a, uh, a claim from yesterday. The enemy captured the southern part of Ocheretny. Uh, caps up, so that's their derogatory term for Russians, intercepted the defence forces during a change of units. Unfortunately, the enemy managed to take advantage of a situation and all those people uh, who have been concentrated in the suburbs for the last few days, scattered and are already hiding in the southern part of the village and in multi-storey buildings. Uh, yesterday, quite strange events took place in the village itself. As a result, today, the enemy began to have serious tactical success. We follow the events. In the video, Bradley suppresses the positions of the Russians in the western outskirts of the village. So that the claim is the western outskirts of the village uh, being over here. So yeah, a bit of a disaster going on in Ocheretny and also the Russians making gains in Nova uh, that's the one to the southwest of or to the west of the railway line. There is a Nova Bakhmatifka over here, it's obviously a different one. Um, Nova Kanyove seems to calm down a little bit, even though the Russians have made some pretty substantial gains to the what to the east of there. But it seems to be all about Ocheretny and just these you know annoying moments and suddenly the the enemy can take huge advantage of you uh, russia's advance along the railway line says war mapper has uh, sh shown them to enter ocheretny with Semenivka also contested and pervomysky captured ukraine's two month held full back line is compromised expect a gradual withdrawal two defenses behind the Vovcha river uh, and its reservoirs so this is the idea that this could have compromised the positions behind the river, the Derna River here, and the digging in on the higher ground. If they have been, if the Russians have been able to make some serious gains to the north of there, it means they can come down and not have to get behind, uh, you know, get over the river itself. So it could be a case of falling back to this river behind here. It's not the end of the world, but it does mean the Russians will be a lot closer to the um, Procross target that they want to get to. Uh, and yeah, so I don't know whether the Ukrainians will try and push back here. I mean, it'd be lovely if you had huge forces, you would just do some kind of push across there um, and cut them off or push down from there. Uh, but of course, that's never going to happen. Um, and it looks like the Russians are going to grind out some consistent successes in the area. Um, if we, yeah, and, and that's that for... Uh, for the sources, we'll see what the Institute for the Study of War has to say. So Russian forces recently made confirmed gains in Osheretny uh, amid continued fighting near Avdivka. Geolocated footage posted on the 22nd shows Russian forces raising a Russian flag over the Osheretny Military Civilian Administration building in central Osheretny, suggesting that Russian forces captured the railway station, crossed the railway line and advanced northward into the central part of the settlement. Let's look at that. So you've got the railway line coming through um, 
here from the south east uh, and flag raising at the railway station there showing that the Russians appear to have full control over everything to the south of the railway station and railway line. Uh, then to go back to the RSW, uh, additional geo geolocated footage posted on the 22nd shows that Russian forces have also advanced to another building in southern Ocheretny. Uh, one Russian mill blogger claimed that Russian forces have almost completely seized Ocheretny and that Ukrainian forces only hold positions in a brick factory in western Ocheretny. Uh, ISW has not observed visual confirmation of that claim, claim and that would, I assume, be this uh, large industrial area there that the uh, the Ukrainians could be holed up in and have given up the, the whole of the rest of, of the settlement to the north and east. Not sure if that is true. That is a Russian claim uh, without any uh, justification, but uh, just letting you know what they are claiming. Um, no changes anywhere else. Semenivka mentioned, Pervomysky mentioned as places that the Russians appear to have captured. Um, which, as Warmap has said, that compromises this defensive line if they have captured Semenivka there. Um, and yeah, then we come down to Krasnohorivka, where the Russians have had some consistent gains over the last week. Uh, Russians, according to Surat Map, moving, into, moving further into those eastern suburbs of the settlement. We'll go to Surat Maps to see what they have to say about that. Um, so in situation... Here, during the last six days, the Russians have made new advances inside Krasnoharivka, taking control over the cemetery and parts of Istorichnya and Sh uh, Shuchazliva. Who puts a CH after an SH? That's just not, it's not right. You can't do it. So I'm not going to say it anymore. Uh, so anyway, they, the Russians have made, I should not make light of a very serious situation, which is the, the Russians have made some advances uh, in several places here over the last few uh, over the last week, and you can see them inching through uh, possibly uh, Krasnohorivka. Although it must also be said that the other mappers don't agree with that, um, and in fact, Deep State Map is wildly different mapping here and has the Russian defensive line far back from where Surat Maps has it. Uh, nonetheless, those are the claims for that area, and then we come down to I'll just see if there isn't any uh, further claims to what's going on. Uh, no, that's to Marienka, uh, and we'll go to there next. So, um, right, here, here we have Marienka. So geolocated footage, says the ISW, posted on the 20th, so a good couple of days ago, shows that Russian forces advanced on the eastern, outs to, on the eastern outskirts of Heyerivka. The Russian Ministry of Defence claimed on the 22nd that Russian forces seized Novomokhalivka, but several prominent Russian mail bloggers reported that Russia, Ukrainian forces sorry, maintained positions on the western outskirts of the settlement, especially in the Dacha area. Okay, let's have a look at that. So we've got, before we get down to Novomokhalivka, we've got Marienka here, just south of Krasnoharivka, and the Russians pushing through into the eastern outskirts of Heyerivka, as according to Surat maps here, and that is what uh, the ISW says is confirmed. Uh, here we have a geolocated bit of uh, of evidence. Positional combat of the area of Marienka, the forward position of the armed forces of the Russian Federation in the Daches in the southern part of Heyerivka, under fire from Ukrainian FPV drone and armed forces of Ukraine. Clarification of the line of contact with the advance of the Russian armed forces in a western direction of about 150 metres. The Russians have advanced there, but again, we must, we must be careful about what is... Um, what is understood by this because uh actually if we go back to here the english here positional combat in the area of marinka the forward positions so it doesn't necessarily mean they have full robust control over that area but also you know they might uh, <laughs> But uh, as you can see, it's quite different mapping, though. So this, the map, I was tr trying to make it a bigger map, but I can't. I, I'll uh, just um, expand it here. So this is Heyerivka. You've got the two um, lake areas and a very different sort of understanding of the Russian defensive lines, as you would in the Suryat maps claim, which has the Russian defensive line all the way down here and you know this this was what the other map said with geolocation so yeah doesn't doesn't quite add add up to what surat maps says right let's see what the geolocation is for the russian forces and that's all the way back here um 
so I don't, I don't know why Syria Maps has claimed what they claimed there. They may have seen some evidence of Russians in that in in those positions uh, around here, but no other mapper agrees with that. And uh, the ISW citing um, adjudications much further to the east. Anyway, as we come further down from there, we come to. Uh, Nova Mokolivka and they're claiming the ISW is that it's pretty much all been taken which all the mappers agree upon now with Andrew Perpetua filling in the last part of Nova Mokolivka and putting it under Russian control but some Ukrainians it says uh, are well at least some Russians say that there are some Ukrainians fighting in the outskirts still uh, and then further to the south of Nova Mokolivka the Russians filling in uh, some of these fields that is Andrew Perpetua not quite getting up to the point where Syriac maps and deep state maps have the Russian defensive line, but on the way to there. This is uh, a bit of a shame that, that Nova Mokolivka suddenly sort of capitulated. He was holding out for quite a long time. The, the Russians were made to work really hard to take this whole settlement. And uh, in the end, the mass uh, won out. So quantity over quality. Quantity has its own quality and then when we come further to the west here along the southern front line past Vukhlidar uh, and we come on to the Velika Novosilka salient we see uh, we remind ourselves of that meandering river is it the Yakri Mali river if I remember something like that uh, let's have a look I'm sure it'll be written there uh, no the Mokri Yali river almost almost right Mokri Yali River and there was I almost reported on this yesterday but I, I didn't mention it in my hits and losses but actually it was mentioned in the Institute for the Study of War um, uh, daily report so I, so I will talk about it I just yeah uh, here it is so geolocated footage posted on the 22nd uh, shows Russian friendly fire incident involving a Russian tank and an MTLB so an armored person carrying a tank fighting uh, armored fighting vehicle it says it show and it indicates that Russian forces had advanced east of Urizhani so it, two things going on here one the Russians have blown up or or damaged damaged and destroyed two of their own vehicles and they were it was evidently theirs because they had like V's and I think maybe an O on the other one but anyway here we say we see the source saying Urizhani friendly fire Russian 14th Spetsnaz Brigade. So these are special forces brigade taking out a Russian tank and an MTLB with infantry with anti-tank guided missiles. Ouch! That is not uh, very sensible. Uh, but it does tell you where Russian vehicles are. Now I can't tell what they're doing there. Whether that that means that they control that area or whether they have just attacked attacked towards there and been hit by their own people. Um, you would assume, uh, and again, be careful because assume makes an ass out of you and me. <laughs> you can assume that if if they are shooting on their own vehicles in these positions, yeah, right next to each other, then they would not expect their own vehicles to be there, which means that this is probably thought to be Ukrainian territory or grey zone more likely grey zone and therefore that two of their vehicles were there was like oh that must be ukraine they must must be ukrainian vehicles because because the ukrainians are basically in that position so they hit them with atgms blew them up and it turns out they're russian so possibly a russian attack took place and then they were hit by their own people um which means that i would not suggest this shows that the russians control this area so it's, it's good to see that none of the mappers have changed their mapping according to that data point. But yeah, a bit of a kick in the in the shins for the Russians in that area. And then we have Robotina, no change there. And no change to the mapping in um, on the Dnipro River. Although there is something that's worthy of note. And that is a flag raised in Kazachi Lahiri. So Kazachi Lahiri is this settlement that is just downriver from... Krenki, uh, it's, it's Cossack camp is what Kazachi Lahiri literally means. And what's happened there? Well, there's been a flag that's been raised on a, uh, some kind of, I don't know, it's not, is it a water towel? No, it's not. I don't know. It's on some element on the western part of the village. So let's go and see where the geolocation is for this. Here we go. We'll plug this in to 
the map and then see what to make of it. Obviously, in order for there to be a Ukrainian flag there, you would assume there are Ukrainian soldiers getting there. And that is a very interesting place for the Ukrainian soldiers to potentially be rather than, or I guess you could say someone that lives around there. But I don't think this looks like anywhere where anyone would live. And it's quite risky to get uh, locals from Kazachi Lahiri to go out there and put a flag on top of that but sometimes I don't know the detail of the, of the video here sometimes you get um I don't know I think it has been sometimes you get either side sort of flying around with flags and they drop a flag from a drone and it says hey look we've been here it's sort of trolling but also a bit of PR uh, there's every chance that this is some kind of PR exercise rather than an indication that there are Ukrainians fighting in this area. If the Ukrainians were fighting in that area, it's kind of an odd thing to do, to go to the lengths of, you know, when it's all going to be dangerous, you're in a grey zone and you spend all that time climbing up that um, edifice and plonking a flag on top. It's, it's probably not a good use of your time and you are telegraphing to the opposition that you are there like hello guys we're here and you know we're here because i'll put a flag here so there there is probably quite a good chance that, that that has been put there in some other way and doesn't really represent that the ukrainians are particularly active in that area so take that with a pinch of salt would be my cautious approach to interpreting that data point right uh I think that's about, I don't think there's anything else I was going to say. There is at the moment, uh, or there has been this afternoon, uh, talk of a strike on Crimea. I think the Crimean, the Kerch Bridge was closed. There were worries from the uh, from the Russian source in the area that Kerch Bridge was going to be targeted. I don't know that I've heard anything particularly uh, since then. Let's just, uh, just have a quick little look, just in case there is any breaking news to share with you with uh, with regard to that. Um, no, I don't think so. So, no, uh, no other breaking news concerning strikes on Crimea, but it could be something to look out for. We do know what we do know uh, that has come out this afternoon is it looks like the Russian, uh, sorry, the American uh, aid package is going to be about a billion dollars worth of aid, which is a big, big aid package for a single amount. And that will be given to Ukraine really quickly. There's talk about a lot of it already being in Germany and Poland, which I was saying to you anyway. I both speculated, then showed you some evidence there was some of that. Um, but yeah, we'll look forward to hearing news about that as hopefully Senate vote on it today so th there's already preparations i think there must be they might even be debating it in um in the senate or if they're not debating it they are prepping out the room and whatnot so that there is there is um uh is definitely taking place today that vote as far as i can work out anyway that's enough from me you take care everybody speak to you soon and uh don't forget to pop in to listen to my chat with jake bro tomorrow uh evening or tomorrow night uk time take care